Hello. This episode, I'm going to be carrying on my work with Spiderbot, a six-legged walking robot. Where we left it is it was able to walk forward, and we're now going to look in ma into making it walk backwards, making it turn. We're going to look at some of the issues we've been having and maybe fix some of the problems with current and around memory as well. So let's get on with it. So, the story so far. Uh, where you left me last time, I'd figured out that I could use a variable smooth speed to control how fast it was moving in its uh, ant gate. Yeah, that's plenty frisky that is. And smooth speed was used to increment the angle at which the servos were moving, pulling things forward. So they'd move backwards and forwards in the gate parts according to smooth speed. So. My ideas revolve around how I could manipulate that smooth speed to get other movements. What if I just set smooth speed to negative? No, that's not going to work. So getting this to go backwards, at the moment the function doesn't know how. And I'm going to figure out how to make it go backwards and how to make it turn. I mean, are those actually in opposition or are they... Ever so slightly, yes. So we'll just crouch again. Yeah, that is hot. So this is getting hotter when these these servos are locked. Because that obviously, that cable there is carrying the current for uh, 16 of the 18 servos. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it turns out going back it was relatively easy. Because I had a hips range that I could set and a smooth speed I could set. If I make the hips range negative and the smooth, smooth speed negative, it'll go backwards. The hips range controls how far forward or back the hip joints are allowed to go while doing the ant gate. There's a smooth delay and a smooth speed. Trying saying that quickly. And uh, what it does is it has got a little range counter which as these are being told to move backwards, they're not just being told go jump here. They're being moved by this smooth speed over a small loop with this smooth delay. If I set the smooth speed negative, well, it's going the opposite way. And if I set the hips range negative, then it's going to be going backwards. So if I move it forwards, we should over here. And I've got to watch the cable being in the way again. And it goes backwards. But then we needed to turn, so I needed to think about this again. Now that's going to be tricky because I've called these three group one and these three group two, or maybe the other way around. Uh, but I've grouped those. So to make it turn, I would actually have to start considering how different sides would move. Either I would change the hip range on one side independently of the other uh, to, to give us some direction. Uh, or maybe skew one of the sets of hips and the other to turn us. Or I have to kind of move them at different speeds. Now the problem with moving at different speeds is, that means I could end up in a position... I suppose it's as long as every side has at least one foot down. But you don't want to end up in a position where two sides have only one foot down. That isn't going to be good. So this is why I'm considering could I alter what's going on in the hip range to perhaps have it so it can turn to one side or the other under control. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. So we talked about leg groups before, but I've got this thing called a scaling leg group. So we've got a set of legs and a set of scale indexes, which is how much we're going to scale the hip movements. Here we create the two scaling groups and we set the scales to these left right things. Yes, we're setting the scale twice on so once on each group. I've had a slight issue trying to get this to turn. I've actually ended up with a running out of memory condition in MicroPython. Now, MicroPython, I suppose, one of its downsides is it probably does take quite a lot of memory up on the ESP. But uh, also, I suppose, it's the way I've been experimenting with these gates, is I've been kind of taking one gate and adding another and adding another to one big demo file, a Spiderbot demo file. And this was getting larger and larger and larger, so it's probably time where I do a little bit of splitting it up into other files, a little bit of refactoring, tidying up, 
so I've got the memory to start playing with more. And look, I've not even gotten this uh, ultrasonic sensor engaged yet, I'm just trying to get things to move and turn. So uh, yes, there's going to be a bit of coding and refactoring I think now. Okay, I've since figured out two things. First, it runs better on carpet than it does on those boards, which is contrary to all the wheeled robots, but it's that way up. And I've reduced my memory and split up files, but my scaling, I'm scaling the whole angle. And that leads to some very, very strange behaviour. You see, these are scaled by their angle, and you notice it's completely skewed. So I'm just going to put it back into a crouch position so it can go back to neutral. So actually I'm going to have to rethink my whole system for positioning. Because currently I'm positioning by absolute servo positions where it's 0 to 180, where 90 is the middle. But the thing is, the whole time I've been building this and the whole code premise has been based upon 90 is the neutral position. So if that's the case, what I probably need to do is to call 90 0 and specify all the other positions relative to plus or minus 90. That'll make some of the thoughts about what I'm doing easier anyway, but it'll also mean that when I scale these, I get the behavior I expect. And in this version now, I'm using 90 plus in all of these places, so the neutral position is zero. So you can do this multiplication by this scale. The scale we get here is we've got a list of scales that we can set by the index of the legs. So this is that left, right, left, and right, left, right. They need to use the different scales. Scaling left or right down means you're gonna get a movement or towards the other side. And if you go negative, you start to be able to turn on the spot. So you reduce that turning circle. So while making everything 90, I was caught by a classic Python gotcha. And I was doing a if hip or if leg or if knee behave in this way. The thing is, is when everything is referenced to 90, I've got more zeros. So things were not happening uh, because if something equates to zero, well, that becomes falsy. So if it's falsy, you don't get the condition occur. So I had to exchange that if something for if something is not none and then I can get the behavior I wanted. I'm going to set left to 0.2 of where the right's going and it's going to turn vaguely to the left. And we go into the same sweeping as before but we're using this group move which will automatically pick up the scaling because it's using self to iter which gets you the scale and the legs. That's quite a big turning circle. What if I scaled it to turn on the spot? No reason why it shouldn't. Oh, oh, it crashed. Hold on. Oh, oops, it wasn't crashed. It had just knocked its power cable out. Oops. <laughs> so now if I can make it turn the other way. It's more or less turning on the spot. Oh, it appears to be treading water there. Okay, what if I say right equals minus 0.5? Will that work? Okay, what if I set it to zero? Ah. 
There you go, it's turning right. So this is possibly the most complicated bit of code. This is all going to be on GitHub. And uh, yes, uh, I mean, this is probably from here where I'm going to move forward because this is easily the fastest and the gate which you can get turning. So this is the best gate that I've come up with so far. And it's turning left. And if I take off all scaling factors, it should go straight forward. Now I notice that those feet are still in contact, kind of. The knees up and knees down are scalable factors, albeit they're globals that just affect things in here. But by having them as such, it means I can actually pull this value up so the knees will go up higher. So I can kind of try and guarantee that the feet are not dragging on the floor. Hmm. Looks like it's pulling to the left, but I can scale the side down on the right and tune that now. If I scale that to 0 0.2, I'm barely moving this side. Ah, oh, now look. These are not coming up high enough. It's kind of like it's pulled down too far. Ouch. Okay, I think it's pulling too much current for this wire and that's taking out current that should be going to positioning these servos. Yeah, let's uh, go into crouch. And I think if this actually is getting hot, for this wire, then I'm wondering if actually we're getting weak servos because of this wire. So I think I need to double this up or find some other way to deal with that. I suppose unless I can find a thick wire that can come from the fact that oh, this tethered power is going into this uh, node MCU base. Now it's trying to distribute the current between these and the node MCU, but that's also being powered by this uh, 5 volt USB cable. So the power on this is a bit of a mess right now, and that may be why we're getting servos that are kind of slightly weak in pushing where they need to push. And lots of clicking and rattling is because we are low on power, there's just not enough. Um, and the fact that this wire is getting toasty hot. So this power problem, I've decided for now uh, to stop it getting too hot by bodging. So I'm going to use this big thick cable here and I know it's black and I'm putting it across the voltage. Uh, we'll use a more proper thing later, but I'm going to crock clip it from that voltage line there to pin over here. That should hold while I'm testing the gate and that'll hold until I do a more permanent solution where I'm probably going to be wiring batteries straight into this part. I ended up sticking in this cable for now to uh, increase the current capacity because uh, I think with 16 servos coming on that one cable you were getting close to 4 or 5 amps and uh, these little DuPonts are probably only good for about 2 amps or less. So uh, it's game over there, look! Unfortunately, while testing various gates, and actually it's still turned on, I may as well turn it off, we had a catastrophe. One of the legs has plain snapped off right where I thought it was a little bit weak. So uh, I'm uh, sadly a little bit disappointed, and that will probably have to be fed back to the guys who built this, I suppose, or the, the place I ordered this from. That's a real shame. I mean, that was just while trying to walk, and even it was getting, you know, nice and fast and a bit more stable, and then, well this. I mean, unless I wanted to build a quadruped, uh, I guess I need to go and see if I can find a replacement for that. Hold on, there were spares for these in that box. They, maybe they knew.
it's all repaired. There, uh, this leg is bolted in. Let's see if I uh, plug it in. And it's alive. And let's see. Okay, it's alive. Should be able to get slightly more consistent left and right of that. And it's still pulling to the left slightly, but that's far better. There may be some tuning to be had on these when they're all in their neutral positions as well. I suppose it's back and working and I'm back in business. It is flimsy. That's bent in the middle. I suppose with that little bit of repair and a little bit of uh, change which I'm going to have to make here, I think we've had a fairly good exploration of the gate of the robot now. Uh, and we've got it to walk. We've even got it to turn, which is awesome. I and mean, you can see here it's kind of mid-stride where it's uh, been turned off. I didn't return it to neutral. Uh, which might make putting it in a box slightly more interesting. But uh, I think that's pretty good fun watching that move. So I think my next steps with Spiderbot, when I return to it, I'm going to try and make sure I get some power. And uh, these little spaces here and here are probably perfect for uh, servo power and motor power. And then when I've got actual uh, non-tethered power, I'm going to try and get these to do something. So maybe it can do a simple kind of wall avoiding trick. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've enjoyed watching uh, Spider-Bob make its uh, first move, especially uh, the ant gate. I quite like that. That's my favourite. And if you like this, please subscribe. Thumbs up if you loved it. If you really like this, please go to patreon.com slash Orion Robots, where for a small subscription, there are various perks, including previews of some of the videos I'm making. You can take part in some polls on what I'm going to do next and you can support obviously what i'm doing building robots making these videos making my github contributions being a mentor and all the little things that are kind of part of what i do with orion robots if you're a speaker of another language or you've time to transcribe please transcribe these videos for me uh, it allows people who are speakers of other languages or people for whom you know they're hard of hearing or even people who just want to see video as a written format and then skip to the good bits it allows them to do that if there's a transcription and i'll see you soon in the next video go make stuff and be awesome bye